everybody, Mike Linehan here with blog post number 27,000. Only kidding, but I will reach that number one of these days. So I'm here at the location where I'm actually launching my business with my partner Paul, um, and it's called the Republic of Work. So it's a co-working space set up for small businesses and entrepreneurs uh, to come meet with other companies and uh, launch their business successfully. So I'm here with the head honcho, uh, Donald Cahillan, also known as DC. So good that he's known by an acronym, like JFK. So hopefully for your fiance's sake, that's all you share in common. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die by a sniper as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'd get an airport named after you. Probably, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you'd have to do us a favor and get the cork pool Vita route like, back in the All picture. Right, like, you know. All right, yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, so, DC, could you give me a bit of an overview of what Republic of Work is um, and maybe like uh, your role within the, the space? Yeah, so um, look at its most basic level, Republic of Work is a 15,500 square foot space in the middle of Cork City. Yeah. If you go to Google Maps and you zoom in on Cork City, you keep zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming, keep zooming, you end up here. Yeah. So we're, we're the literal heart of, of Cork. Um, and it came about basically because I'd been involved in a load of startups and it started a load of businesses and I worked with a load of startups. And office space is always a problem yeah. because when you start a business, it's usually just you. Yeah. And then it becomes you and somebody else. But then like these days, like, you know, you're starting a business now. Yeah. If I said to you, in 12 months' time, will you have five employees or will you have 50 employees? Either answer could actually be true at this stage. Yeah, and I don't want to be worrying about, you know, replacing the toilet paper. Like, yeah. That's the last thing I want to think about. Like. So, like, what we what we figured is, like, we, we wanted to, to build a space where, I suppose, myself and my business partner, Dave, were both entrepreneurs. We wanted mm. to build a space by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Um, and where we thought, as you said, we could remove all the mundane stuff yeah. uh, and potentially let businesses focus on like whatever the core is. So yeah. like, if the core of your business is selling a beauty product, you should focus on that. And everything else from toilet paper to coffee to everything else, you should let to somebody else. As you like use the term uh, like business concierge type service. Exactly. Like, service. like, like you know, like there's... 80 to 85 percent of all businesses are exactly the same in that yeah. you know you've got your core little product but then like most of your day is taken up with sales marketing finance paying bills all that stuff yeah. and all that sort of stuff that's all usually the stuff that when somebody starts a business that's the stuff they're bad at yeah because usually whatever whatever reason they've started the business that's something they're passionate about yeah nobody is passionate about invoicing <laughs> so like, my partner of, would think as if we're actually on that one <laughs> he, he, feel, he feels a little tremor every time he takes send in <laughs> yeah. but it's one of the biggest problems with people starting businesses that all the stuff that they re- that that isn't i guess a natural thing for them mm. um, and that they're learning for the first time it's right. the same stuff that every business has to learn for the first time yeah. so our logic was if you put a whole load of businesses in the same place and if they're at different levels, so that you've got startup businesses, guys who are a little bit further along, and maybe even successful businesses yeah. that just need a bit more space, you can learn from the guy who's in front of you, and at the same time, you can help the guys who are just coming in behind you. Yeah. Um, and the same token goes for, like, so we say we're kind of, we're stage agnostic. The other thing that we are very much is we're, we're industry agnostic. Okay. So a lot of these sorts of spaces, they're very much focused on technology businesses. Mm-hmm. We're not. Like, Tech businesses, beauty businesses, fashion businesses, any business, food yeah. businesses, even donut business. Um, <laughs> because these days there's something like if you're in one industry, you can learn a lot from something in another exactly. industry. Exactly. Like know, that, I mean, yeah. for example, like I mean, I came into <coughs> the space and like I, I'm familiar with the whole co-working concept. Like I've been in co-working spaces like in San Diego where I was for two years. But like I came in here and within two hours of like trialing the place. You had already put me in touch with like guys who were doing what we were doing, but in a completely different industry. So we they were able in two hours to like basically school us on three years worth of mistakes. Like that's invaluable. Yeah, that's the bit that I think genuinely like the great thing about Cork is like there's a great support structure there for people getting started in business. The problem is is that until you put a physical environment into it. That's like the most valuable thing you can learn from anybody else is like what mistakes they made. Yes. So you can avoid them. I think 
great thing about here is you put the businesses all into one building. Yeah. That's the sort of stuff that it's very hard to sit down with someone and say, tell us everything you did wrong. Yeah. However, like, you know, if you're sitting down with a cup of them with a cup of coffee at 11 o'clock, yeah. you won't believe I fucked up today type stuff. <laughs> you can, like, and that's, you know, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I think a lot of starters don't realize is that the successful guys that they want to emulate are really like the guys who probably failed the most. Yeah. You know, if you look at every successful entrepreneur that's come out of Cork from Pat Phelan, Dan Kiley, the guys in teamwork and everything like that, tell you it's just because they, they held on longest, you know, the claim yeah. took off. Somebody reminded me, it's like that scene in the last Mission Impossible movie, you know, where Tom Cruise is hanging yeah. off the side of the plane. They hang on to the plane long enough, there's a chance you can get the door open, you know? Yeah, and I mean, those guys that you mentioned, like, I mean, they're coming in and out of here freely, like, uh, on a regular basis. Like, isn't that but it is, it's also because the other the other simple fact about the place is that there is a kind of a, well, like, we're a fully commercial business. So right. We're not fun, there's no government funding, there's no grant money, there's no nothing. It's every penny that went into this came out of either my pocket or, or Dave, my business partner's pocket. But there is a kind of a thing where the one good thing about it is, is it does give a lot of people maybe who are further along it does give them a way to give back yes. because they're not going to like as you said guys like we mentioned they, they're not going to go into a coffee shop and look for random entrepreneurs and sit down and say can I help yeah. you but like now if they're in town and they have a half an hour to kill they'll come in here into the lounge yeah. and hang out and have coffee and like I'll see them and I'll go actually you know what now if you have 10 minutes to spare could you give Michael 10 minutes there you know he yeah. wants to talk you know you did a lot of work in Russia Michael's going to do a lot of deals with the Russians, you know. Yeah. Maybe. Another clue as to what my business is going to be. <laughs> Nothing to do with espionage, just you know. That's right. Yeah. Espi espionage was the service. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose, like, another thing with that and making it conducive to, like, you know, people speaking to each other and like, fostering those relationships is actually, like, the layout, the physical layout of this place. And you've invested quite a bit in, like, you know, making it conducive to people yeah. just freely interacting. Well, like, I mean, you know, if you do the maths on the building, right? Because, like, right. really, you know, office space is expensive. It is. Right? Um, and we have here, sure. <laughs> like, more than fifth, more than 20% of our entire building is basically here in this lounge space. Right. right? When you go to a lot of co-working yeah. spaces, it's like, I mean, our business is how much money can we make per square foot? Yeah. So you go into most co-working spaces and they would... They'd have this place three quarters of the way full of desks. And they'd have two sofas here in the corner. Whereas I guess we knew that our business was very much around getting not get not filling the place with businesses, but actually getting the businesses to talk to each other. Yeah. So that's why like of the five floor spaces we had in the building, we took one of them and we made it just a lounge space. Yeah. So that, you know, the idea is that like you I suppose, you know, everybody's, you go to these networking events and it's like, oh, I should reach for a coffee someday. Yeah. We wanted to make it so Happens. bloody obvious that, like, well, the coffee machine is here in our coffee bar. So actually, yeah. like, you should be having that meeting right now. It yeah. shouldn't be like, I'll meet you next week. Yeah. This yeah. hypothetical meeting that never actually, never happens. Yeah. Never happens. Yeah. I don't think I've ever done one of them. Like, in all the, the coffee, the hypothetical coffees, yeah, actually happen here. That's, the, like, the way I said it to somebody recently is, you know, one of the one of the absolute side benefits here that costs you nothing is like you could actually network a hundred plus hours a week. Yeah. Because I mean every minute that you're in here is a chance for you to just bump into somebody. Yeah. Um, it's the same there's an you were you know, you were talking like we put a lot of effort into the design of the space here in terms of you go into a lot of co working spaces um, and they subdivide people into offices and stuff. And that's a real to us, that's a real old school way of thinking yeah. because yes, We've put in a lot of things like uh, soundproof boots and stuff, so that, and we've meeting rooms so that you can have privacy. The option is there. The option, the privacy stuff, but privacy by default means that you're keeping your business separate from a whole pile of opportunities. Yeah. So we wanted to give you that option where, look, by default, this is very open, and when you need to discuss your finances and stuff, here's a meeting room, here's a thing, or whatever like that. But it means that very quickly, you know, the guys who are working around you are going to go, oh, that's Michael, he's that guy. Yeah. You know, he does, I don't know what business he's in, but, you know, it's something to do with the Russians. And <laughs> therefore, you know, the next time maybe whether they're going to Russia or they interact with somebody, 
you know, it just doesn't really work with somebody. You know, it's like you know, it's like we well, half know what your cousins do. Yeah, you know they I mean? know what they don't know what I do. But they know I get yeah. them out of the good. But like, if you, sp- if get... you spotted a good opportunity, you'd be the person to say it. And I think that we've had a lot of that sort of stuff happen. Yes. Where kind of you know, it's it's very quick. Like when you go to an awful lot of shared office spaces, and it's you know, you you're, it's just about you and your space here. The way we look at it is, look, yeah, there's desks and chairs and Wi-Fi, but actually, like, what you're doing, it's a bit like joining a gym. You're joining here for the motivation and for the atmosphere and all that sort of stuff, yeah. and you can kind of choose to use the equipment whatever way you want. And in theory, if you need some personal training or some advice, that's all around as well, you know. And when you mention the advice, actually, funnily enough, like today, like, for example, uh, me and my partner, we went and met with a solicitor here in the South Pad. We also had an accountant come and meet us. We got like four hours of free consultancy off both of those yeah. because they're interacting with the space. Yeah, it's like the, the guy, I mean, that's something too, you know, for a lot of those guys who are interested in working with new businesses, they know that, like, they know that new businesses don't have the money to pay them. So their logic is we, we give it back now and, and, you know, when you're selling your company for 100 million, they're going to get yeah. their five percent of legal fees. Really so we, we see a lot of people, like I suppose, including the bad businesses here, the kind of concierge service stuff. Somebody needs to get printing done. We yeah. probably know the cheapest way to get them done. If they need graphic design, if they need to buy stuff in China, and and the very basics. If they need to know, well, what do we need to get the legal legally done, and what do we need to do to keep ourselves out of out of financial jail? Like we've done that a million times, and we know we know the best person for the industry that you're getting into or the stage you're at. And that's that's the sort of information that we want to pass off to people here. Hasn't that always been your motto from when I used to work was it getting shit done, you know? <laughs> it's it, but it's it's true. It's just it's just about like pace and it's just about trying to have an atmosphere where like, you know, we kinda of stayed clear of putting pool tables and ping pong tables and all that. Like we still have the crack and stuff yeah. here. But it's because like you know, it does what it says in the tin, it's about work. Yeah, it's about so trying to get people to just enjoy the work they're doing. They love your work up in the walls here because that's what we, that's what we mean. Do the stuff that you enjoy and all the stuff that you absolutely hate. You still have to do it because you're yeah. in business. But we can kind of hopefully we can help you to do it the the least painful way. You know, without us thinking about the work. That's it exactly. So well, thanks very much for your time, Dee. Thanks, Mike. Uh, that's uh, everything from us here at the Republic of Work. In the next blog post, I'm actually going to take you on a tour of the building, so stay tuned for that one.